Hey, what's up? My name's Holotide, and today I want to talk about some things that have happened in the week that I haven't uploaded a video. It was my birthday. You know, I took kind of a, a relaxing time off. It was very nice. I, um, yeah, just wanted to enjoy my birthday, take a little, a little break. But of course, when I decided to take a break, all heck breaks loose on Twitter and whatnot. I won't talk too much about the Bungie thing. I'm going to save that for the end of the video. So if you're interested in my thoughts about what is happening with Bungie and how that will kind of ripple out and affect a lot of things in the future, uh, stick around for that or skip ahead if you don't care about Halo, but I assume most of you do. So yeah, we're going to talk about what Unishek tweeted out and then we're going to talk about um, what Sketch said about pricing. I think that this is one of those like two steps forward one step back kind of thing where they made a lot of good changes and a lot of you know promises and whatnot or you know letting us know that they're working on stuff and then having something just be a super bummer negative so probably some of the most important things are addressed by uni's uh tweet that i think are still huge issues with the game that if they fix these things that it's just going to really solidify the experience for people new players coming in i've had a ton of friends start playing halo again that's great to see but let's stop you know beating around the bush let's actually talk about it the first thing that he touches on is networking uni said that our previously our focus was on improving the existing system bit by bit however we recognize that this was not having the impact that we wanted and you expected so we decided to pursue fundamental changes to the underlying network model since this decision was made the team has been heads down and a more comprehensive overhaul an endeavor of this scale takes time which is why we haven't had many updates to share significant work has been done here already with more still underway, we'll share more when it gets closer to a public testing phase. So that's cool that they're going to actually let the public test it. Remember when we had flights? I'm not like a forerunner or a pilot or um, I don't know, any of those other things. So I don't get invited to that stuff. I'm sure others have been. But yeah, the networking issues, desync and whatnot, if they can, if they can mitigate that, like I'm talking, even if it was like a 75% a increase in network capability or however you want to phrase that, just optimize optimization oh my gosh this game would just be insanely better that's always the number one thing i hear from people is how the networking feels like when you get in a good game and the and the servers work in and your shots are hitting it feels amazing but more often than not it feels like people complain about that myself included i feel like that's one of the biggest turnoffs to people trying a game is if they get on and it just feels like poopy on the network they're like all right whatever i'm not gonna waste my time next up is the custom game browser and he says that they know that there's some issues happening you know like loading in and the, the game crashing and stuff like that. They know that it's an important thing to fix. They, I mean, this season alone has seen such a huge increase in people playing custom games. And I mean, with the firefight stuff coming and people making PvE content, it's only going to keep getting more and more popular. So they definitely need the, to double down on that. Multi-use customization. They said that they are going to bring in shoulders and more armor coatings, that they're working on that. So that's good that they're not just stopping at helmets. And he also says that the HTS team bundles from season one are still planned to be updated so that's nice that so we'll be able to wear our envy coating let me know in the comments down below if you bought the envy coating before they took it out i did i am a cool guy they talk about stability enhanced crash reporting and the mid-season update so those things are very important the first three the networking custom game browser and multi-use customization very important things fix the networking now we're going to talk about the one step back and probably the most negative feedback i i guess you, it doesn't even have to be negative feedback it's just critical feedback has been about the season five shop prices they've changed how much things cost there's also been like items that say sale and whatnot and sketch replies and before you guys dog sketch don't sketch isn't the one making the prices of the shop or anything like that he's a community you know manager he's somebody that we can talk to so you need to treat this guy with respect because he's just relaying a message and I will fight you guys on that. And the reasoning behind the shop increase is definitely a business driven decision. Like I can't really hate on that. Like, yeah, do I wish things were cheaper? Absolutely. Why wouldn't I? But I get why it just stinks. But Sketch says shop prices on mini offers have changed in conjunction with the multi-core functionality being added to customization content with season four. We saw a new shop offers reflect a new pricing model to account for new coatings being multi-core enabled. With season five, many previously released coatings and all helmets in the game were updated to work on all cores and those shop offers were slightly adjusted or not slightly but were adjusted to reflect these changes 
and to have parity with season four, season four offers. Ugh, that is a lot of reading. At the same time, the team went ahead and made proactive adjustments to offers that included shoulders since they will be multi-core enabled in a future update. It was a trade-off to try and front load some of that work now versus just having a constant churn of shop pricing changes along the way. While many season one to four offers have been adjusted, I want to be transparent that as more multi-core codings come to bear, there are going to be more past offers that weren't included with initial season five adjustments, and those will see updates in the future. And then he just kind of wraps up at the end. So that is poopy. It's also weird that you can art of like it's an artificial currency in a game that i don't know it's just it's really hard to explain and wrap your head around when some of this stuff you know costs as much as like a game does and yes halo infinite is free to play they have to make money there's no campaign dlc there's no you know like they make it off the battle pass and even then if you pay for the battle pass one time and you get your you complete it you get your ten dollars worth of credits or whatever and you just buy the next battle pass so they're not really there are people out there that are not spending money like that you know they bought one battle pass and they haven't bought any of the other ones and maybe they're not buying anything in the store so I get it. Like, the game has to make money somehow, but when you artificially inflate prices and stuff like that, it is a bad look, in my opinion. I actually responded to that tweet, and it's gotten pretty good uh, reaction. I said, I think in the future, comms letting players know that you are changing the prices and why would be much appreciated and help curve some of the negative sentiment. Instead of them just not saying anything, and for like two weeks, people are like, what the heck is happening at the shop? You know, why can't we just buy things individual? Blah, 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 blah. So... I get it, but I absolutely can agree with the community sentiment. I think that they would make more money if things were priced cheaper because then more people would buy it and it would offset. I, d I don't know. I'm sure that they've spent millions and millions and millions of dollars trying to figure out the most optimal way to get people to spend money. Maybe that doesn't work. I don't know. All right, let's talk about the Bungie thing real quick. So in case you haven't heard, you've been under a rock. Bungie fired a bunch of people, laid off a bunch of people, including, you know, industry veterans and legends, people that have worked there since Halo. And it's actually insane to me that it happened. I think a lot of these people are going to be looking for jobs. And, you know, Infinite Halo 343 has been hiring more and more people. So maybe we'll see some of those people that are talented come over to 343 i don't know but i just feel like this is kind of the end of bungie this is the death of bungie we're watching the swan song um if you guys never watched the gdc bungie talk where they are like we never want to over deliver we don't want to like make crazy good content and we hold back on good ideas and new things because we don't want to have to constantly make stuff that's as good or better then this is not a surprise. And it finally seems like people are kind of waking up to the, you know, the fact that Bungie has kind of been on the decline for a while now. And that's unfortunate. But I am I feel like I got my money's worth in Destiny. Um, I, I still don't think that I'm going to buy or play the final shape, which kind of sucks because out of like the 10 years, I played like seven of it hardcore. It's just unfortunate. Anyways, that's going to do it for the video, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like down below. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace!